Welcome uh, to this year's uh, Creativity Learning Through Experience concert put on by the Cleveland Composers Guild. Uh, I want to uh, welcome you all to our, our broadcast. This is a very special and unique program that the Guild does every year uh, where we pair uh, young performers who have been chosen with living, working composers and the composers write pieces specifically for these young people and then they work with them, mentoring them. Uh, their teachers sign on to the project and everybody is paid so that it's a very professional uh, project and every year it's just a wonderful, wonderful experience. Of course, an experience like this is not possible without the wonderful help of others financially and so I do have to say um, that uh, this project has been supported in part um, by the residents of Cuyahoga County through a public grant from the Cuyahoga Arts and Culture Fund. Uh, and so we're very thankful to them. And we're also very thankful to the Bascom Little Fund, who's continuing support both for this program and other concerts of the Cleveland Composers Guild have helped us each year to put on wonderful seasons. I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, my name is Sebastian Birch, and I teach theory, composition, and piano at Kent State Stark. Before I start, I would like to thank the Cleveland Composers Guild for making creativity, learning through experience possible. And some very special thanks, of course, go to Jenny Connor for making everything come together. As a composer, it is a fantastic experience to work with young musicians interested in learning new music. It's also great for young musicians to see that music is created by living people that make mistakes, corrections, changes, edits. It has been a real pleasure working with pianist Ria Bolotova and her teachers, Vitlana Ivanova. Ria is a vivacious, intelligent, and hardworking pianist. She possesses an excellent technique and is gifted with refined musicianship. It is obvious that Ria is receiving excellent instruction from her teacher, Svetlana Ivanova. I wrote the first sketches based on Ria's introductory comments about herself, where she wrote that she loved the freedom of expression that comes from music. She also described herself as being creative, energetic, imaginative, passionate, and humorous. I found this to be very inspiring and sent out to write a suite for piano. The first sketches included four movements, Prelude, Tango, Adagio, and Waltz. Since the work would have been too long for the project, Rhea picked the movements that she liked best that would fit in the allotted time. She also picked the movements that were most challenging technically, Tango and Waltz. Both movements represent energetic. While the tango leans more towards the passionate and lyrical side, the waltz expresses energy along with imagination, drive, and humor. I hope you will enjoy Tango and Waltz. Thank you. In your description of yourself and, and the introdu your introductory description of yourself that I got, you know, you wrote that you like playing humorous music. So that's kind of what gave me the idea, you know, mm -hmm. of, of starting out with something fun. So, mm -hmm. so, you know, so I think I would do play, you know, dum -dee -dum -da 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 -dum -dee -dum -dum -da, you know, like you're really like kind of some kind of kid teasing mm -hmm. somebody or something, mm -hmm. you know. That's really nice. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, yeah, I mean, have all the fun you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then here at 17, I, I would try to keep that uh, legato feel going a little long, you know, all the way to the end. So it's almost as though the piece is finishing, you know. Da ba da 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 di da 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 di da 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 da, and out of that, it almost sounds like a slow piece is finishing. We get it's like it's like somebody interrupts you. Ba 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 bi ba 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 ba. Does that kind of make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then just one last thing, just to be picky, is that remember the melody is, 
re, re, do, la, sol, fa, mi. And the other part is a counter melody. But it's almost sounding a little bit like the counter melody is because is part of the melody uh -huh. in measure 18. So you you know you can really keep it, you know, I don't have a piano here, so but you know, da 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 ba di be ba 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 di da Does that make sense? Yes. That's you don't have to start at 17. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe the C at 18, the C at 18, just really let it, it's probably hard on Zoom, I can't hear, but the C on 18, just really let it ring. You know, the long notes, you just need to light up.
Hi, my name is Joe Hollings. I'm the composer of Kailani's piece, and the piece is titled Maeve's Meditation for Violin and Piano. I wrote it for Kailani after hearing her play at a lesson with Miss Liesel at CIM. Uh, she had great long bow strokes and uh, indicated that she would love something slow and meditative, so, uh, so that's what we did. The, she also told me that she liked Celtic music, and while the piece isn't strictly based on anything Celtic, it certainly tries to uh, emulate some sort of Irish folk song. Um, the, the piece is in three throughout. The piano maintains a steady, uh, fairly slow uh, beat all the way through. Uh, a steady accompaniment with the violin starting off fairly freely and has a sort of improvisatory line over the top of it. And as the piece progresses, it becomes more and more complex and more and more agitated, uh, it interrupts itself, uh, which is something I've, I've, um, I've done before in other pieces, and it seemed to fit well in this piece. Uh, Maeve's Meditation is the title. Maeve was a Celtic, uh, an Ulster, Northern Irish uh, warrior princess, and that seemed to be fitting for both the title um, and uh, the, the kind of sound and the kind of interest that Kailani seemed to have. So it was great fun uh, creating it for her and she did an absolutely wonderful job. Uh, so thank you to her, uh, her mum, and uh, teacher, Miss Liesel. Great job.
Uh, so my name is Ryan Charles Raymer, and I'm uh, the composer of uh, the piano duet for Tim and Julia, who is a pair of brother and sister, taught by Tatiana. And the title comes from uh, the idea of them having sibling rivalry. Actually, I asked Tatiana whether or not I should put their music on the same page or on different pages. And she says, oh, no, no, no put it on separate pages because if they study it together, the bench they'll fight. <laughs> so that was my whole inspiration for the piece. And it starts with um, some clusters, which they had never played before, so I wanted to include some clusters, which are a little bit crass. And then it immediately goes into a very um, solemn solo by Tim, which was inspired by the first thing I ever heard him play, uh, that was Green Sleeves or what child is this? And he played it so beautifully, I wanted to create something for him uh, that would give him that expressive element all by himself. And then his sister comes in with a rolling accompaniment. And uh, regardless of what their, um, what their chemistry is at home, I think on the piano they created pure love and uh, pure magic. So I'm really happy with how that piece turned out. The tempo is perfect, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And also, um, Tim, your solo in the beginning, uh, I would say played a, a lot more quietly so that it has more of a floating quality. Like, uh, and you played it so softly and expressively, so that's what I want your solo at the beginning to sound like.
My name is Margie griebling Haig, and currently I'm the Vice Chairman of the Cleveland Composers Guild. I've been part of creativity learning through experience all the way since the project began 28 years ago, and I've probably written about 22 pieces uh, over the years for this uh, wonderful project. When I met Hannah Mazek in January, I was very impressed by her poise and maturity. She struck me more as a young college student than as an eighth grader. I heard her play a bit of the Brook Violin Concerto in her lesson, and then I chatted with her and her teacher, Kimberly Myers Sims, about Hannah's capabilities. Hannah admitted that she didn't have a very wide experience with mixed meters, so I decided to make this feature central to the piece I would compose for her. I played quite a bit with differently accented patterns, adding up to the same number of beats, such as 3 plus 3 plus 2, as opposed to 4 plus 4, adding up to an 8 beat bar, or 4 plus 5 as opposed to 3 plus 3 plus 3, adding up to a 9 beat bar. Often her violin part is accented quite the opposite from what is going on in the piano part, so a high level of concentration is needed to pull all of this off. Hannah's intelligence gave me no doubt that she would be up to the task. The other quirky composer element employed in this piece is a waltz based on the letters in Hannah Mazak's name. I use this technique far too frequently, but as long as the audience cannot hear the trick, what's the harm? The waltz also turns right around backwards, becoming a melodic palindrome. I have called my piece Novelette because it feels as if there are several characters engaging in various surprising dialogues and adventures, all within five minutes. Right. right. Uh, what did you think you learned from it both times you've done it? Um, it's important to be creative, and um, there's just so many hidden things in a piece that sometimes you never really think about that mm -hmm. mean a lot to the composer. Oh, that's a good answer, I'd say. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it is amazing if you start to really pick a piece apart, all the different things that are in there. Um, and the disadvantage that you have when you're working on a piece that's written just for you is you have no frame of reference. So you can't just go to YouTube and listen to somebody else performing it. Um, you can think of what you might be saying, like in words. So like the first three bars, 53, 4, and 5, that's maybe a question. And then, and then the next part, maybe it's another question. It might be a second, it might be a slightly more intense question. And then, you know, eventually there's an answer to it. So if you, if you think of those phrases as being um, sort of driving more ahead, um, not, not tempo-wise, but just continuity-wise.
I just wanted to thank Miss Margie for her hard work in designing a piece for a young person to play. It must have been a fun challenge to compose the waltz with the letters of my name as well as finding rhythms and mixed measures that flow well. I look forward to next year's musical adventures and have enjoyed this year's Composers Guild immensely. Thank you for everything, for inviting us into your home to going above and beyond. I would also like to thank the accompanist Ben for stepping in last minute to perform with me. Working with him felt natural and was an awesome experience. I can't imagine how difficult learning the piece in a matter of days must have been. Communication between players is vital and communicating with Ben was easy and effective. Thank you for your hard work. My name is Nick Pewen. I am a member of the Cleveland Composers Guild and have been one since 1998. Uh, I've had the very good fortune of having a lot of my music performed by some very talented musicians ever since that time when I joined. And I've been, I've been very lucky and I'm very thankful and I, I hope to uh, contribute to the Guild as much as I can. Um, the piece I wrote today is called a better choice. Uh, there was an earlier one that I wrote for my performer, Matthew Iacobelli, but th that one didn't quite work, so I tried another one, and this worked much better, so that's why I called it a better choice. Um, a couple of, four minutes long. It's in two keys. It starts out in A minor with an introduction. Uh, the theme is stated, and there's a little development of the theme. Then there's a modulation, key change up a half a step to the key of B flat minor where the same thing is pretty much done. I have um, a theme stated, 
brief development, and then we go back to the beginning, and then we repeat both sections again, and then we take the coda. Uh, it's kind of fast, I, 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 I was, but I was really pleased the way my performer practiced it. He's an eighth, or he will be an eighth grader at the Incarnate Word Academy. It's in Parma Heights, and I'm very looking forward to, to hearing him play it today. Um, how do you feel about that, Matthew? Would that be a big change for you to get used to, or do you think you can do that? I don't think it would be a big change because I've kind of been having that issue for a while. Yeah, okay, then fine. Okay, yeah, yeah, go a little slower because remember, remember, we didn't want we didn't want the Brexville police to come to your house and give you a speeding ticket. Um, uh, yeah, right, that'll give you a chance to change your hands and then, and then show the difference between. Uh, you know, the identity, the personality of, of, of the phrases. So, oh, okay. Um. You know, like Rob said, when you get to 43 and 44, you can slow down just a little. Not only that, when you get to that eighth note triplet on beat four, it'll be a little more pronounced. I mean, you can hear it clearer. Okay, you want to try that again? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, now that sounds better. Did you like that, Rob? I did. Did you like yeah. that?
My name is Matthew Saunders. I'm the composer of Peristyle, uh, which I wrote for Parker Karras, guitarist, who is a student of Robert Grucka. Uh, Peristyle is a, a series of columns that encloses a courtyard or a veranda, or the courtyard enclosed by a series of columns. And uh, once the music came out, it just seemed like that was an appropriate title. Uh, I like the sound of the word, and the, uh, I could imagine the piece being played in an open courtyard or a veranda like that. Uh, Parker did just a fantastic job, and Robert Grucka, who is a champion of new music uh, here in Cleveland, in addition to being a fantastic guitar teacher, um, really did a great job working it up, and uh, I'm so pleased with the way it came out. I'm not a guitarist, and so finding my way into that medium uh, it, it is a challenge, and, not, and so I'm glad that I had a chance to accept that challenge and to come up to it. Uh, and then uh, Parker just did a fantastic job interpreting it, and I'm so pleased with the way it came out. Um, and so wonderful to see such a young person who is so intense and serious about his, his art and his talent, and I uh, hope that we see great things from him to come. cool stuff happening in there. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, whenever we have bomb, 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 there's a tendency to want to rush that. Um, you know, I would, uh, uh, if I were, if I were teaching it, I would tell my students, you know, think the eighth notes in there, one E and a two E and a three E and a four, right, so that, uh, uh, you know, so that it doesn't go too fast, because then if it goes too fast, you you set yourself up for trouble later on when it gets more complex, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, watch out for that. Don't rush that little motive. Uh, you know, that's, uh, we keep harping back on that because that's what we want the audience to think about. You know, it's like coming back to your main point again and again when you're talking to somebody to make sure everybody gets it.
Hello, my name is Karen Grebling. I was assigned to write a piano piece for Leah Green, and I chose to write a piece called Eventing on a Black Horse because we have a shared interest in equestrian events. And I chose the black horse because I used a lot of the black keys on the piano. Okay, well done. That's a lot of music to learn, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What was the hardest part for you so far? Um, I think it was just the first page, I think, getting it started. Mm -hmm. I'm not used to all the, like, sharps and flats and stuff. It's really right. new. Right. And that's, in fact, I saw that in your note when, when you were doing your application, that that was something that was kind of a challenge for you. So that's what, actually one of the reasons why I did that. I know mm -hmm. it's clean, isn't it? <laughs> but I thought since we're going to come back to it over and over again, it would become more and more familiar and you'd start to get more comfortable with playing on the black keys. Uh -huh. That's what the black horse is all about, is the black keys. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah. So um, you're a horseback rider like me. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. So one of the things I was thinking is that when you have the staccato places where you, uh, for example, uh, I'm down at uh, measure 27, the bottom of the first page. If you can think of that more like it's trotting. Do you oh, think yeah, it's really bouncy. Close, close to the trot when you trot? Yeah. Okay, so if you think about that as being like posting the trot, you know, ba -ba, ba -ba, you know it has a little bit of a lift to it on the second yeah. beat, Um And you're, you know, kind of supporting yourself in your legs, that kind uh -huh. of feeling. Um, and then when we're doing the, the more the legato things, particularly in the section where we do the... Um, uh, this, uh, the first section, the event jumping, um, those three big glissandi, when you've gone over a big barrier and you knock all three of the poles off of it, it goes clunk, clunk, clunk. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Have you ever done that? I've not done hunter jumping. I, I haven't, I, I don't jump, but I know what you mean. Yeah, so if you're watching somebody doing show jumping and they uh -huh. knock the barrier over and, and it's one of those ones with the logs and all three of them roll, roll off, that's what that's supposed to be. Oh. Don't, don't worry too much about detail with that. That's more of a gesture, it's an effect. And imagine knocking over the th three logs on that barrier and they go clump, 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 right? Yeah. Okay, so it's, okay. It, it's, not, it's not nearly as um, specific. It's more of the effect. Okay. Okay?
Hi, my name's Jenny Connor, and I actually was given two brothers, uh, Kay and Kenga, who both play the cello. Uh, but the first difficulty uh, that I had with this piece is that they have, um, there are different places in their musical development. So that Kay is very advanced, he's a senior graduating, and Kenga is just in his second year of Suzuki. And what I wanted to do was create a piece that worked with their different skill levels, but that also made them both equal partners. I did not want Kenga to be overshadowed. Um, so that was my first thought. When I met with the uh, two cellists and their teacher, Ida Mercer, uh, back in February, I believe it was, that's when the piece crystallized. Because in talking to them after I heard them play, and they're both wonderful, uh, they mentioned, first of all, that they're from a very large family. They live on a farm, and Kenga loves nature. And so I thought, wonderful. Uh, let's do something with nature. Sounds a little bit um, uh, pastoral. And then I was asking them about what they like to do, and they said they like to read. And so, what do you like to read? What's your favorite book? The Bible. Oh, what's your favorite verse? And Kay uh, instantly said his favorite verse was Isaiah 26, 3. And so I'll read that to you. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. And so uh, I realized then that I had the, the formula, so to speak, for the piece uh, to make it very personal to them. Uh, but as I was thinking about a perfect piece, and it's interesting because the piece was written before all of this pandemic things happened, um, and yet when I was thinking about a perfect piece, I thought a perfect piece is not just something pastoral and sweet. It actually is dealing with the tensions that come, the difficulties, and working through them where you find this perfect piece. And so while this is a very pastoral piece and you'll hear bird songs and whatnot, uh, it also has some dissonant elements that resolve into the consonants as if the cellist is working through life's problems. Um, it also has source material from the Donna Nobis Pachum, so you might hear that not completely quoted out, uh, but melodic materials from that. So it was really wonderful working with these, these young cellists, and they did a fabulous job on the piece. So the first question for both of you is, um, in doing this project, what did you find the most rewarding? I think the aspect of having uh, your own personal song um, was really cool. Um, and to be able to play it with a sibling of mine was also very fun. Um, and to be able to give your own input and have a song made specifically uh, based on that was a lot of fun. Yeah. I. I... I liked it a lot because like it was something that I, I liked nature and it was a song that was like nature says so really it was a really um, good experience playing a song that was like there's like there's a lot of bird calls and things like that. And I just really liked the nature and like just like the song that was like nature too. Cool. Now what did you find most challenging in this project? I would say being able to put it together as um there are a few um, tempos that I guess a little new to uh, us. And so that was a little challenging. Um, some of the higher notes and making it actually sound like a bird uh, was a little harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so learning how to play as an ensemble. Yeah. Was both cool and, and difficult. And so then the last question, what do you think that you gained the most from having done this experience? And that could either be a gained like understanding or it could be something like musically, how you think you've grown. I think in just like um, timing, counting, and like duets and stuff like that. That wasn't the best at counting before. Oh, and you're great now? <laughs> you yes. are, it's fabulous. What about you, Kay? Um, I, say, I would say being able to, uh, the double stops were a little harder, so being able to play those um, and have a good sound yeah. was a challenge and I think it helped me, especially with um, playing harmonics in a, mm -hmm. in a note together. Um, and then I guess playing in a bit of a more different um, meter and a different um, tempo structure, I guess, piece structure was a learning experience. Because you guys hadn't done any um, free notation before, had you? 
And so that's a totally different world. Well, thank you so much for doing this project. It's been wonderful working with you guys. You're welcome.
Hello, my name is Robert Beckstrom, and I have the pleasure of composing a piece for two piano students of Corin Mino. Uh, one of them is Shan Shan, and the other one is Allison. And once uh, Corin sent me profiles of her students, I knew I was you know, going to have a lot of fun because these girls are in their teens, they're fairly advanced, and so we can throw some things at them. And I know that when they're in Corin's hands, she's one of our region's really fine piano teachers and a great supporter of new music and the Composers Guild. So I knew that they were in very, very good hands. So I was really looking forward to this. Now, there are certain media which, in my mind, have almost built-in comedic elements that either you take advantage of, or if you're not careful, they become comedic on you even if you didn't intend them to. And to me, piano forehands is one of those. The piano is a limited space, and probably piano forehands puts the two players closer together than in any other musical duet situation. And when you're sitting with somebody really close together, some funny things can happen. You can sort of trip across each other, you can get in each other's way, and so there's lots of magnificent problems that can come up in the piece. So um, I, I sort of built the piece from the notion of a mirror. So if somebody's going this way, somebody else is going that way. Uh, but if they're doing that, you could converge into a spot where there's almost no room to play because the two of you are too close together. And that happens about a minute into the way in the piece. And then somebody gets the bright idea, you know, I'm going to play in your space. Well, if you're going to play in my space, I'm going to play in your space. And that starts a little bit of a conflict that generates. And then they decide to sort of give up on that and uh, get on with the piece. But we had a lot of fun. There's a lot of nice little technique things that they're doing, uh, showing that they can play 16th notes and count rhythm and so forth. So it was a, it was a fun piece to play. It was a fun project to do, and the girls did a fantastic job. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Thank you.